Hi guys, my name is Anne Greis and I welcome you to a new video. This time we're talking about the on back press function that you may already use in some of your apps to intercept the back press. The on back press function gets called as soon as the user, for example, uses the hardware buttons or the gesture navigation to navigate back. You might have overridden this function in your app code, but as time goes by, things change. With Android 13, there is a preview feature called predictive back gesture. Let's have a quick look at what this feature is about. Okay, we're right here at the official guide to the predictive back gesture. As you can see at this small animation here, if you use the swipe gesture, you see that you get a preview of what the user is going to get if he yeah, executes the back press. As this comment here marks, the feature is um, not visible to the user, but as a developer, you can enable it if you like to. Um, the documentation, how you can do it, is right on this page. I will link this article uh, down in the description. But um, this is actually not what this video is going to be about. But um, because of this feature, the on back press got deprecated. If we take a look at the official documentation of the activity class, we can see that the on back press function has been deprecated. However, note that is only relevant if you really implemented your custom logic for this uh, backpress callback. So back at Android Studio, let's have a quick example at what such an interception of this callback could look like. So we have a really, really simple activity here with a simple legacy XML layout. And you can see the activity here. And uh, we override the on back press. And if I hover above the uh, function, you can see the declaration overrides deprecated members. What we are going to do if um, the user hits the back press button or the swipe gesture is that we just show a simple alert dialog and ask if the user really wants to close the app. If he confirms, then we just call finish the function of the activity. And if I now hit the back gesture, we get this alert dialog. And if we confirm, the app closes. So now that we saw the legacy way, let's take a look at what we need to do in order to migrate this deprecated code. So, but before we actually start, please make sure to go into your app level build gradle file and include the following activity ktx dependency. I think you need at least alpha 05 and at the time of this video rc02 is the recent version. If we add this dependency, we will already have the code in our activity um, that will finally also support the predictive back gesture. Now that we have that, let's go back to the sample activity and start with the migration. We know that the on back press function is deprecated, so we need another solution, an alternative. And luckily, we can use a very similar code. We will declare a new variable and call it on back pressed callback. And now we just use an object and use the on back press callback as super type. And here we can define if the callback is actually enabled. So if you want to, you could declare some kind of condition to dynamically enable or disable this callback. I just set it to true. And now I also need to implement the members, which is only the handle on back press function. And that is um, the exact equivalent to the on back press function. So now, because we want to have the same behavior, I just recall also the show app closing dialog. Okay, so I can remove the deprecated code. And now, okay, we declared it, but how to actually uh, tell the activity that this callback should be used? You can just call on create. And now I will use the on back press dispatcher. Now to add the callback, we just call add callback. And as you can see, we have a few overloads here. The first one should be avoided in my opinion, because 
um, yeah, you will need to manually handle the uh, removal of the callback. We can step into the function real quick and so you can see it by yourself. This method is not lifecycle aware. If you'd like to ensure that you only get callbacks when at least started, use at callback lifecycle owner. It is expected that you call on backpress callback remove to manually remove your callback. So um, just as the documentation states, we should better use the uh, second overload and we can just pass in this for the activity because um, the activity is a lifecycle owner. And now we use the on back press callback to add the actual callback. You can see that you have also the option to use the third overload. If you like, you can do also that. And yeah, that's already it. Now using this function, the on back press callback will get added as soon as the lifecycle owner or to be more specific, the activity reaches the started state and it will automatically get removed if the activity lifecycle state reaches the destroyed state. And that's already it. No more things to do. Uh, very simple migration. Of course, if you have a more complicated case, uh, there's might a little bit more to do. And yeah, so a really quick migration tutorial here. Um, I think it's very easy to do. I hope you could follow along. The respective Medium article is linked down in the description if you want to have the code samples. I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.